ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد يحيي ويميت وهو على كل شيء قدير واليه المصير وأشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدًا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه اليقين فصلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد يقول الله تعالى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله تعالى من النار All praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We thank him, we glorify him and we praise him in all situations in the previous khutbah, we spoke about characteristics of the angels. We said that the angels, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described them with many different characteristics as has come in the Quran and the Sunnah. And a lot of these characteristics are characteristics that believers should also seek to have, and seek to uh, mimic and emulate the angels in. So we mentioned that the angels, they are very humble creatures. Humble. They don't make have any arrogance towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the shaitan did he said that the angels they are shy and modest creatures that they are organized and unified creatures and they are beings that have good appearance and like, and like good and pleasant things these are what we mentioned in the previous khutbah and these are all characteristics that believers muslims human beings we should also seek to uh, mimic the angels in and we continue by mentioning some of the other characteristics of the angels which we can also take the example from. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa describes the angels in one hadith uh, with a description of being those who rush and compete in good. Rushing and competing in good. And this is found in the hadith of uh, Rifa'a ibn Rafi'. He says that I was praying behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I was praying behind Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I sneezed, I sneezed. And then I said, uh, Alhamdulillah. And then he added some phrases afterwards. Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fi. Kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yarda. And he said these words, and these words were never said in salah before. These words were never said in salah before. Some other narrations mention that he said this after they rose back, or after they rose back from ruku'ah. And after the salah, the Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he asked the companions, who's the one who said that? And perhaps the, 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 the one who said the statement, he was maybe a, a bit afraid that he might have done something wrong. So he did not answer. And Rasulullah ﷺ asked a few times, Man al who said this? Two times, three times. And then finally he said, I was the one who said that. And then Rasulullah ﷺ said to him, repeat back what you said. Repeat back what you said. And then he said, Repeat what he said. Alhamdulillahi, hamdan kathiran, tayyiban, mubarakan fi, mubarakan alayhi kama yuhibbu rabbuna wa yarda. Faqala nabiyu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Walladhi nafsi biyadi, laqad ibtadaraha bid'atun wa thalathuna malakan, ayyuhum yas'adu biha. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam swore by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he said that, I swore that, I swear that 30 something angels, they all rushed, they all raced to see who's going to carry these words up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They all rushed and they all raced to see who is the one. One angel, it's not going to be all of them. One angel is going to take those words up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they all rushed and raced towards this. So we see this, this quality of the angels of being 
competitive, in good, rushing towards good. And we, as believers, human beings, we are even more in need of this quality than the angels. Because the angels don't have reward or punishment. They don't have Jannah or Jahannam waiting for them in the next life. But we as believers and human beings, we have punishment and reward. We have Jannah and Jahannam in store for us. So yes, the angels, they do this purely for Allah's pleasure. But we have an extra reason why we should be rushing and competing and doing good. Because there is reward and there is punishment waiting in the next life. There's Jannah and there's Jahannam. And so we should be competing, not in the dunya, but for the akhirah. Seeing who can get the highest level. If you compete in the dunya, it doesn't mean anything. Right? Somebody can have a higher salary than you, better car, better house. None of this means anything because once they die, that's it. It's gone. But if you compete for the akhirah and you attain the level that you desire, it's forever. It will last forever. So why would anybody compete for something that's going to be gone? When you can compete for something that is permanent and will never go. And this competition that we're talking about for the akhirah, it's not something small or little. The difference between levels in paradise, as Rasulullah says in the hadith, is the difference between the heavens and the earth. Rasulullah says in the hadith, daraja, that there are 100 levels in paradise. That there are 100 levels in paradise. And the difference that Allah has prepared this, these levels for those who strive in His path. And the difference between one level and the next is like the difference between the heavens and the earth. So when you ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, don't just be satisfied with getting the lowest level. Then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the very highest level, which is Al Firdaus. It is the middle part of Jannah, and this is the best part. The Jannah is different levels. The middle part is the best part. That's also the highest part of Jannah. And above Al Firdaus is the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all the, 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 the rivers of paradise, they flow from, from here. So when you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ask for Firdaus, why would you settle for being less? Why would you settle for being less? We, we all love each other, but would anybody be satisfied that their brother has a higher level than them in paradise? Of course not. You would want to be at least at the same level. Of course, even in paradise though, there is no jealousy. We can be rest assured that there's no, more, there's no jealousy. Even if for somebody in the next life gets a higher level than you, you won't be jealous of them. You won't be envious of them. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلٍ إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورِهِمْ مُتَقَابِلِينَ That on the day of judgment and in the next life, Allah will remove all the different types of rancor and hatred and jealousy and all the diseases of the heart. And the believers will be إِخْوَانًا عَلَى سُرُورِهِمْ مُتَقَابِلِينَ Everyone will be on thrones facing each other, interacting with each other. But some people will be higher than others. So if you can, in this life, aim for the highest, why would you settle for the lowest? So this is a quality that we should aim for. Just like the angels, they compete in doing good and they race and they rush towards doing good, we should also be the same. And we have even more incentive because in the, in the next life, there's a, permanent, there's a permanent abode waiting for those who have obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and attained and achieved the rank that they achieved. From the qualities of the angels is that they seek out gatherings of dhikr. And Rasulullah tells us in the hadith that there are specific angels. All they do, their only job, and their only purpose is to seek out gatherings of dhikr. To see where is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being remembered, and then they join those gatherings. Rasulullah says in the hadith, إِنَّ لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى مَلَائِكَ يَطُوفُونَ فِي الطُرُقْ يَلْتَمِسُونَ أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ That there are angels, Allah has angels, and they go and they move around the streets and the roads, Seeking out the gatherings of dhikr. Whenever they find people who are, who are mentioning and remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they call each other. They say to each other, Come, come to what you are seeking. So they look for these gatherings of dhikr. And this is how believers looking for the gatherings of dhikr, looking for places where the Quran is being recited, where knowledge is being taught. We have classes 
uh, in the masjid. We have lectures in the masjid, not just in this masjid, but in different masajid. Seek out these gatherings of remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before a day comes where you won't be able to remember Allah even though you want to. Even though you want to. A day will come where you will wish that you remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you, and you uh, attended these gatherings, but it will not benefit. Yawma yatadhakkaru insan As Allah says in Surah Al-Fajr. On that day, mankind will remember. فَأَنَّا لَهُ الذِّكْرَى But remembrance will not be of any benefit on that time. So seek out the gatherings of dhikr, seek out the gatherings of knowledge and remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while you have the chance now. And even uh, once you die, even, even before that, this path might be closed for you if you get sick. When many of us, we delay uh, seeking knowledge and we, we delay uh, seeking, uh, being, be, becoming religious and obeying, obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until the time comes where we can't even get up and go to the masjid anymore. We don't want to wait to that time. Ibn Abbas radiallahu uh, he used to have a friend or a companion and he would send his companion out to monitor, go and look for people who are reciting the Quran. And when you see that they're about to finish, they're about to do a khatam of the Quran, then come and inform me. And so when a person would be about to finish the Quran, this companion Ibn Abbas would go and he would inform Ibn Abbas and Ibn Abbas would then go and join because this is a special time when you finish the Quran. It is a time of uh, barakah and mercy. So this is another quality of the angels that they seek out the gatherings where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is remembered and this is also something that believers should also be striving for. Also from amongst the characteristics of the angels is that they love to listen to the Quran. They love the recitation of the Quran. As Allah says about the Quran of Fajr, inna Quran al-Fajr kana mashhuda, that the Quran of Fajr is witness. Witnessed by who? Witnessed by the angels. The angels love to listen to the recitation of the Quran. Many of us, we might not be of the level, or we might not have the opportunity to recite the Quran. We might not have studied, or we might not have learned many uh, surahs of the Quran. And so we think that the Quran is not my share. I don't have, I, I don't have uh, much to do with the Quran. I'll look for something else to gain rewards. No, you can also gain rewards, not just recite, reciting, but also listening to the Quran. Make the Quran something that you constantly listen to, like the angels. We have uh, this, the the uh, the uh, the internet, the YouTube, and all these other things. You can on your on your phones. You can listen to the Quran anytime, in any place, in your car when you're going to work. Make that a habit of listening to the Quran. There's a hadith in which Rasulullah uh, there's a companion by the name of Usaid ibn Udayr. He was a person who was a reciter of the Quran. And one night he says that he was reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. He was reciting Surah Al-Baqarah and he's noticed that when he was reciting, his horse is going crazy. His horse is jumping up and down at the recitation of the Quran. And when he stops, the, the horse calms down. And this kept on going every time he's reciting. The horse is uh, starting to get very uh, hyper. And when he stops, the horse calms down. So he went to Rasulullah in the morning and he told him what happened. And Rasulullah said that those were angels present with you. Tilka al-malaika kanat tastami'u ilayk. That those were angels. They were listening to your Quranic recitation. And if you had continued, if you had continued reciting and you didn't stop, the angels, they would have appeared to the people. And the people would have been able to see them. Of course, we can't see the angels. But Allah would have made those angels appear. And the people would have been able to see them if you had only continued in your recitation. So the angels, they like to listen to the Quran. And so let, let's make that uh, a habit that we have of listening to the Quran. Even if we can't recite, at least get into the habit of listening to the Quran on your way to work. Whenever you have free time, there are many different uh, ways in which we can listen to the Quran on the computer, on the phone, on the tablets, and so on. So these are some of the qualities of the angels. We'll mention a few more in the second khutbah. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمد كثير طيب مبارك فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. From the characteristics of the angels is that they are constantly in a state of du'a. 
And we know that dua is one of the greatest acts of worship. Rasulullah has described dua as worship itself. A dua huwa al-ibadah. It is worship. And from the characteristics of the angels is that not just making dua for themselves, but they make dua for others. And this is the point we want to mention. That we all know we make dua for ourselves. Many of us do that already. But we need to also get into the habit of making dua for others. Making dua for our fellow believers, brothers and sisters. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the angels who carry the throne. These are eight angels and they carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the grandest and greatest creation. Allah knows how big it is. And Allah knows how strong and powerful and mighty these angels are. Rasulullah says in the hadith that I was given permission to describe one of these angels, one of these angels who carries the throne, and he said that the distance between his earlobes and his shoulder is the distance of hundreds, hundreds of years of travel. So these are huge creatures, strong, mighty, powerful, with a great task, maybe the, the hardest task and the biggest mission and task uh, that anyone in the universe has, which is carrying the greatest creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, greatest non-living creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the throne. But how does Allah describe these angels? One, one, one might think that these angels, they have a great task, they have a heavy task. They're occupied in this task and they don't have time to do anything else. But how does Allah describe the angels? He says about them, الَّذِينَ يَحْمِلُونَ الْعَرْشَ وَمَنْ حَوْلَهُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ وَيُؤْمِنُونَ بِهِ those who carry the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they, uh, they, they, they make tasbih of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they seek his forgiveness. And what else do they do? Uh, and they seek forgiveness for the believers. They are constantly seeking forgiveness for the believers. Even though they are occupied with the hardest task there is in the universe, carrying the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they are constantly seeking forgiveness for the believers. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا رَبَّنَا وَسِعْتَ كُلَّ شَيْءٍ رَحْمَةً وَعِلْمًا فَاغْفِرْ لِلَّذِينَ تَابُوا وَاتَّبَعُوا سَبِيلَكَ وَقِهْ مَعَذَابَ الْجَحِيمِ And so they say, O oh Allah, your mercy and your knowledge encompasses everything. So forgive the believers and those who follow your path and save them from the punishment of the fire. رَبَّنَا وَأَدْخِلْهُمْ جَنَّاتِ عَدْنٍ الَّتِي وَعَدْتَهُمْ وَمَنْ صَلَحَ مِنْ آبَائِهِمْ وَأَزْوَاجِهِمْ وَذُرِّيَاتِهِمْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ O oh Allah, O oh our Lord, enter them into the gardens of paradise that you have promised them. And those who are righteous from amongst them of their children, of their parents, and their, uh, and their wives, and their offspring and children. You are the Almighty, the All-Wise. وَقِهِمْ السَّيِّئَاتِ And keep them away from evil. وَمَنْ تَقِ السَّيِّئَاتِ يَوْمَ إِذٍ فَقَدْ رَحِمْتَ And whoever you have saved and prevented from evil, then that is the one who you have shown your mercy. And that is the great success. So these angels, despite having a tremendous task, they are constantly seeking uh, forgiveness and making dua for the believers. When is the last time we made dua for our fellow believer, brother or sister, other than times of calamities? We know when times of calamities and deaths and tri trials and tribulations come, then we make dua for our fellow brother and sister. But what about the other times, normal times? When's the last time we made dua for our brother? Maybe when Allah may grant him this job that he's looking for. Or our sister grant her the marriage partner that she's looking for. Or the sister is pregnant. May Allah make her pregnant easy and make her delivery easy. Or somebody is going through a uh, tense situation and you make dua for them. This is a quality that we need to also develop, which is not just making dua for ourselves and being selfish. We're making dua for our fellow brothers and sisters. A person might believe or they might think that uh, it, there, there's no benefit for you if you make dua for your brother, your fellow brother or sister, right? A person might be a bit selfish and might think that I want to benefit myself first. So let me make dua for, for myself because if I make dua for this person and this person and this person, then it's not really going to be beneficial for me. But this is a wrong way of thinking. Rasulullah says in the hadith, دعوة المرئي المسلم لأخيه بظهر الغيب مستجابة That when a person makes dua for his fellow brother and sister behind their back, not backbiting them behind their back, but making dua for them behind their back, this dua is a dua that is answered. عند رأسه ملك موكل And there is uh, at the head of this person when he's making dua for his fellow brother and sister, there is a specific angel assigned to this person who is 
making the uh, who's listening to this dua and saying amin to the dua. عند رأسه ملك موكل كل ما دعا لأخيه بخير. Every time this person makes dua for his brother or sister in what is good, not for what is evil, for what is good. قال الملك الموكل موكل به أمين ولك بمثل. The the angel will say every time he makes a dua for his brother or his sister in good, the the angel will say أمين and for you the same. So you also get the blessings of that dua. The angel also says أمين and you will also get that. Uh, same thing that you're asking for your brother, you will also get that for yourself, as the angel will say, Amin, walaka bi mithlin, and you also have that. Lastly, from the characteristic, characteristics of the angels, is that they are comfort, a source of comfort for the believers. They are a source of comfort for the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Inna alladheena qalu rabbuna allahu, thumma istaqamu, tatanazzalu alayhim al malaikatu. Allah تَخَافُوا وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا وَأَبِشِرُوا بِالْجَنَّةِ Allah says that those who they say our Lord is Allah and they are steadfast تَتَنَزَّلُ عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ The angels come down, descend to them at the time of death as the tafsir of this ayah the meaning of this ayah is that at the time of death the angels come the angels come and they say to that person Allah تَخَافُوا Do not fear do not have any fear. وَلَا تَحْزَنُوا Do not have any grief or sadness. وَأَبِشِّرُوا And give the glad tidings. They give the glad tidings. بِالْجَنَّةِ الَّتِي كُنْتُمْ تُوَعَدُونَ Of the, uh, the, the paradise, the jannah that you have been promised. So this is the quality of the angels, that they are a source of comfort for, uh, and protection for their believers. And this is how we should be with our fellow believers. Rasulullah says in the hadith, مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرْبِ الدُّنْيَا Whoever, مَنْ نَفَّسَ عَنْ مُؤْمِنٍ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرْبِ الدُّنْيَا Whoever relieves a difficulty or hardship from this life, نَفَّسَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قُرْبَةً مِنْ قُرْبِ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Then Allah will remove a hardship and difficulty for you in the next life, on يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ يَسَّرَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ Allah will make ease for them in this life and in the next. وَمَنْ سَتَرَ مُسْلِمًا سَتَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ And whoever covers his fellow believer, conceals his faults, conceals his sins, then Allah will cover and conceal the faults of that person. فِي الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ وَاللَّهُ فِي عَوْنِ الْعَبْدِ مَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ فِي عَوْنِ أَخِي And Allah is and will continue to be in the assistance of the believer as long as he is in the assistance of his fellow believer. And we know that there are angels who protect, Allah, uh, protect a person by Allah's permission. Allah says in the Quran, لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْلِ اللَّهِ لَهُ مُعَقِّبَاتٌ مِنْ مَيْدِ أَدِيهُمْ وَمِنْ خَلْفِهِمْ يَحْفَظُونَهُ مِنْ أَمْلِ اللَّهِ That there are angels who are in front and behind the person in the side of them and they protect Allah, uh, the person by Allah's permission. And this is how the believers should be with each other, looking out for each other, protecting each other, being a source of comfort, and being a source of ease for their fellow believers. This is the quality of the angels that we should also strive to implement. So the angels have many different beautiful characteristics that human beings should also strive to implement. We've mentioned some of them here, and some of them in the previous khutbah, we asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from amongst those who listen to the word and they follow the best of it. اللهم جعلنا من الذين يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسن ويأسوا الله سبحانه وتعالى to forgive us to have mercy on us to alleviate our brothers and sisters who are going through times of difficulty times of trials and tribulations in all parts of the world in Palestine and different parts of the world ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار اللهم اشف مرضانا ومرضى المسلمين اللهم ارحم موتانا وموت المسلمين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين أمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما
إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون قيم الصلاة